What's going on smart people? Today is officially my 100th daily video in a row and a couple videos ago I asked you guys to leave some comments, some questions that you wanted me to answer either via that one video or Twitter and you guys sure did. I think total I have about 90 comments to go through so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with the Twitter comments because there's way less and if I end up with that it would be a little anticlimactic. So let's just get started with the Twitter questions. The first one First one says, "How do you calculate the con how do you calculate the covariant derivative, and how is it related to the concept of covariant and contravariant tensors?" Right off the bat, getting pretty pretty in depth. I, I'm just going to say that I'm not going to go too in depth with the math questions in this video, especially when they're tensor related, just because I'm going to be putting out videos on it regardless in the future. Um, think of the covariant derivative as the generalization for the uh, for the directional derivative in vector calculus. You know you. It, it basically is, is like the rate of change of a vector field for a vector that's being parallel transported. Okay, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Hey man, I'm starting my undergraduate this fall. My questions are, what did you do to shortlist grad schools? Which grad school rejection hit you hard? Did you give the general, did you give the general GRE? Do you know uh, other grad schools with that credit transfer system that lets you take grad classes like NMSU? <clears throat> Sorry if my voice is a little shaky. I woke up with a really, really sore throat. I actually have a doctor's appointment for it after this, but... Um, so, let's see. What did you do to shortlist grad schools? I'm not really sure what you mean by shortlist. Maybe I'm just being stupid. Um, so, so, let me just talk about how I chose grad schools. All I did was uh, I, I looked up grad schools that offered the field that I was interested in, or that I thought I was interested in. So, my main interest in physics are I really enjoy, or I think I would... By the time I was applying for grad school, I thought I would enjoy nuclear and particle theory, and I knew that general relativity was really cool. So anything that let me take general relativity classes, as well as maybe do some theory, are the, are the schools I applied to. Uh, and I used mainly like grad school shopper in order to do so. What grad school rejection hit you hard? Um, none of them really hit me that hard individually because, I mean, you know, you're, you're never for everybody. And uh, I think it was more humbling than anything. It was like I'm not as competitive as I thought I was. So I, I, that's all I'll say about that. Do you know other grad schools with that credit transfer system that most do? A lot, I think a lot of grad schools will let you take graduate level courses outside of the PhD program and then let you reapply to the PhD program later. So it's not a unique thing by any means. And yes, I did take the general GRE. Okay, um, how does parallel, oh, same person, Alexander Robertson, how does parallel transport work mathematically and how do you calculate it? Do you use the geodesic equation alongside the covariant derivative? Well, as I said earlier, the covariant derivative kind of implicitly talks about parallel transport. I'll get into that a lot more in depth in the future with my tensor videos. And then we got, uh, how early is too early to start thinking about grad school? Um, uh, i.e. studying for the GRE, looking ahead at the courses you'll take, electives, getting involved in the research. Get involved in research as soon as you can. Uh, typically, like, sophomore summer is when you might do your first research internship. Maybe maybe junior summer, actually. Um, there's never, I mean, don't start studying for the GRE too early. I mean, I'd say, like, when did I take it? I took it my senior year, so beginning of junior year, once you start actually having a foundation for all the stuff that the GRE is going to cover, but maybe I'm not one to talk. <laughs> uh, if I plan on going to physics grad school, does it help to have a double major in a subject like math? If you do well, but if you double major and you take a bunch of courses, if it's like math, a lot of the courses are going to be mutual courses anyways. Um, so for example, I basically got a math major, math major, math minor for free just because I was a physics major. Um, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt, right? It shows that you're more versatile, especially if you do theory. Uh, it shows that you probably know what you're talking about. But it looks like I think that that is all that I had for the tweets. So let's move over to the YouTube comments, which there are 87. So total there is about 90. And we're just going to, uh, let's just work our way down. First one, please discuss different and hot fields in physics or applied physics. Career paths in physics. Thanks, Andrew. I think any I think a, a booming field of research nowadays is like solid state and condensed matter. It seems like that's a field that a lot of people are are finding jobs in, to my understanding. Um, 
it's it's really hard. I think regardless, it's hard to find postdoc positions and get full-time faculty anywhere as a physicist. It's it's not as easy as, as just saying, I have my PhD now, can I have a job? Uh, you really got to put in the time. At least this is how it's been explained to me is, is eventually you probably will, but that's after doing maybe several postdoc positions and moving around a bunch. So it's, it's, um, there's hot fields, yes, and there might be fields like condensed matter that might be easier or a bigger market for physicists than other fields like nuclear theory, but uh, it's, it's going to be tough. What were some of the topics from calculus, ODEs, uh, d uh, general physics that turned out to be much more important than you realized when you were taking the class? This is a cool question. Uh, differential equations, all physics can be represented as second order differential equations, right? F equals MA, like the, F, the first axiom of physics, basically, you can express as a second order differential equation. Um, being able to talk about something and how it changes is really useful. From just regular calculus, um, at the end of Calc 3, when you go over Stokes and Divergence Theorem or Green's Theorem, that was kind of like something that was at the very end and then it was like Calc 3 was done and I didn't really pay it too much mind. But then you get into topics like e and m and that is everywhere. Being able to convert from differential to integral form of Maxwell's equations, things like that. So Calc 3 was really useful. Differential equations was super useful. General physics, um, what were topics that were more important? General physics is, is really the limiting cases, right? So seeing how things pan out when there's no friction or uh, air resistance. So being able to know, once you get to the higher level physics, being able to know how to reduce that stuff to the easier stuff that you learned in university physics is a pretty useful skill to have. Because it lets you test your intuition too. What happens if this is negligible or something? Alfred Piano Man, what would you major in if you had to major in social sciences or humanities. Um, in social sciences or humanities, probably, I think political science is, is a pretty useful major. I think it's it's useful to know, you know, how people think, uh, how to get people on your side, and how governments work. I think that that's, that's a pretty, pretty interesting major. Uh, what are the comments? Oh, something, never mind, skip that. <laughs> I have two for you, Diego. What music genres do you like? Any bands, artists in specific? Do you play any instruments? Share the best and worst experiences as a physics undergraduate student. Also your video, oh thanks. Music genres, I love, um, I really, really enjoy anything that's got a bluesy or jazzy tone to it. Uh, I do play instruments, I've been playing piano and guitar and singing for about 10 years now, so it's been, it's been in my life for a while. Any bands, artists in specific? Um, let's see, well, I'm gonna have to think about that. So if if I'm actually going like deep into jazz, I think John Coltrane is, you know, second to none. But if it's more like modern stuff, I, you know, you say words, you say people like John Mayer and stuff, and people are like, oh, John Mayer, what? Your body is a wonderland, but he's a fantastic blues guitarist. He's really, really talented, and he's uh, he's played with people like BB King and just soloed on stages. So I have a lot of respect for John Mayer as a musician. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Is a physics major hard? I really want to study physics, but I have a lot of people telling me university is hard, and others telling me it's simple, you just have, and you have a lot of free time, so what's the truth? Um, sorry if any spelling mistakes, I'm French. Way better than how I would speak French. But, uh, I don't, uh, it depends on your major, and it depends, uh, Anyone who's trying to be the best in their field isn't going to have that much free time. Let's put it that way. I don't care how easy your major is. If you want to knock everyone out the way, if you're, first of all, if it's a super easy major, it's probably not a huge market for it because it seems like anyone can do it, right? So you've got to be the best to be able to find the job in that. Physics is hard. It's hard, it's frustrating, it's stressful, you spend a lot of time that, and it feels like you're getting nowhere, but it's, it's, at the end, it's really, really rewarding once you actually, actually understand something in it. Uh, it is hard, I'm not going to lie to you, um, but I think it's worth it. I think it's, like I said, it's super rewarding and for, for good reason. I think, And I think people respect a lot of people who are physics majors because at the end of the day it teaches you how to think critically and how to problem solve. So it's a hard major because it teaches you how to solve problems in a, in a really wide scope. What's the main thing that motivates you? Progress. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, how did you decide you wanted to research slash pursue nuclear physics? I still have no idea, granted I've only completed the introductory physics courses. I guess I'll find that out once I get into uh, the deep end of the physics pool. I think um, the only thing that modern physics, the only thing I took away from a modern physics course was that they at least showed you the different branches of physics. It was very surface level, it wasn't like you were solving the field equations or anything like that, but it was like your first introduction to relativity, quantum mechanics, and special topics. So that's when I got my first um, kind of view of nuclear physics, and then I started looking deeper into theoretical physics as a whole, and started to uh, really pick apart what branches of theoretical physics I thought the math looked the coolest. And that's how I sort of found my way to nuclear physics. It's it's really versatile as far as the math goes. It's or at least it's got a wide range of math. Um, so that's sort of how I found that. But yeah, it takes a little bit of time. Once you get deeper into physics, you can't help but want to know more about the fields that have been presented to you at a more surface level. So just give it a little bit of time. Which is more important when preparing for the big boy physics classes? Studying the math associated with them or studying the content of the introductory physics classes associated with them. I would say that. You want to get good at physics, study physics. Yeah, the math is super important, but in my experience, a lot of times the physics professors themselves will teach you the math again in a way that they like to think about it. So for example, classical mechanics, we spent a little bit of time solving differential equations. Uh, electrodynamics, we spent quite a bit of time going over vector calculus. So taking the class will refresh the math for you. Get solid on the concepts, the fundamentals, and the con and the consequences as well. Upload the video of getting your wisdom teeth removed. Maybe. <laughs> uh, can an engineering degree translate to a physics-related job? Love your videos, by the way. Yeah, you could definitely get a job going into industry with an engineering degree. You're not going to be a research physicist, though. You have to get your PhD. What would you recommend high school students read slash learn to be more prepared for a physics slash engineering degree in college? Um, I, I said this in a video before where I just recommended going through the Shalm's outlines for physics books. I think that that's really useful. Um, and just, just start trying to solve baby physics problems. Uh, if, you, if your high school offers a physics course, take it and I think that'll give you a rough idea of how your first semester of physics will go. But yeah, it's not one of those things where you really need to over-prepare right before or the year before in order to do well in your university physics classes. Pay attention during your classes. Any note that you take in your high school regarding that physics class, you'll take again in college. So I'm not saying it's useless to do that by any means, but um, so long as you're trying hard in college, it'll come, it'll come when you're actually there. But I, I really appreciate... That's one thing that's really cool about the people that watch these videos is how many people are in high school that want to know how to prepare for this stuff. I did not, I, I didn't do that. So it's really cool to see that people go out of their way to make sure that they're doing everything they need to be doing. Not really a physics question, but what do you suggest doing on the first day of university to get the best start? Uh, find out your professor's office hours and your TA schedule read your syllabus, find out what assignments are due, and start developing a schedule. Um, this person says, start reading the summer before? Yeah, that definitely can't, can't hurt. Yeah. Hundredth video idea, Feynman diagrams. Uh, 101 with Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalism. Feynman diagrams are really cool. Um, that's not a bad idea, because the, the diagrams themselves are really, really straightforward. It's just, it's pretty much representing collisions and momentum space, and then you have a whole bunch of other stuff. It, it corresponds to, to, to some pretty nasty math, but that's not a bad idea. What has been your favorite physics class? Either my second semester of electrodynamics, because that's when I learned special relativity, or I really enjoyed quantum mechanics too, because that's when I felt like I was really starting to get the hang of it. Quantum 1, you just solved the Schrodinger equation a bunch of times. Quantum 2, you get... you you learn how to express the stuff in some abstract ways. So I like that. I think I had a, I started to develop an intuitive way of thinking about um, eigenstates and, and eigenvalues and operators and what the stuff stood for physically. So that was pretty cool. I've also just graduated with a physics degree uh, and I'm going to graduate school for an astronomy PhD. My undergrad school didn't do the best job with teaching us quantum my question is, do you think it's better to teach myself over the summer or just wait until grad school starts and fill in the holes there? Thanks, 
and I love your videos. If you do uh, start doing it, trying to teach yourself, I think that I think you probably should at least try to fill in some of the gaps before beforehand. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, MIT Open Courseware. Uh, I'd say if you watch those videos in parallel with any studying that you do, that'll help so much. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the grad school will fill in the gaps a lot. How does one who is interested in the secrets of the physical universe and loves math choose between physics and math to pursue? Well, you're not going to find the secrets of the physics, physical universe by just studying math. Math, it doesn't really matter what the, uh, what the physical implications are. You start with the logic and you follow it through. Um, it's like how Feynman puts it where he says if you try to tie physics into it, the physicist is the one that knows how to sort of ski from uh, from spot to spot and short it, sort of takes shortcuts to help explain something physical, whereas the mathematician does all the heavy lifting of making sure everything is completely rigorous. Or you can meet somewhere in between and do theoretical physics, which is, you know, pretty rigorous as well. Alright, sorry, I had someone at the door. What exactly does a theoretical particle physicist do? Well, you create a mathematical framework to describe what type of properties certain particles would have so that experimentalists can find them if they exist. <laughs> okay, and there's other, there's, I'm sure there's other things as well, but that's sort of my understanding. Challenge for 100th video. Go out on the street and act like Sheldon Cooper to random people <laughs> like a crazy physicist. That's not a bad idea, but this already is the 100th video. Do you want to know the origin of the universe? may be a nice topic. Uh, eh, sure. <laughs> I mean, that would be cool, but I don't see that happening. You know what I mean? What is a dark photon? I don't know. <laughs> Could you put a sort of counter during the Q&A? Yes. Are you uh, actually going to do Skype tutoring? Yes, I am. Um, within the next couple weeks or so, see, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out how to make like an online booking system. That way uh, you could kind of reserve times and stuff like that. That, that would be pretty um, user friendly. But I'll talk about that more later. Dope Twitter profile. Thanks. It's one picture and a tweet that says questions. Hope you're dealing well with the pain. Well, I'm actually getting my wisdom teeth out tomorrow. So future Andrew really appreciates that. How do you think that your score overall and your bachelor's degree is important? I mean, does it even make a big difference if you graduate with a C or a B plus? I think so. I think it's, uh, I think a lot of the people on the graduate committees understand that the grades aren't typically graded on an absolute scale. Um, and I think that it's much harder to get an A than it is to get a B in these classes because the curve is so skewed towards the middle to make sure that no one fails. Um, so it sort of caters to the people. It, I think it's very easy to get B's and C's in physics classes, and it's much more difficult to get A's. So um, I think I think it is pretty important. Answer questions while looking like a chipmunk. That's what chipmunks look like. Have you watched VI Heart? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. I know that you're triggered. Meh. Can you go through the different paths through undergrad, grad school, postgrad for experimentalists and theorists in physics? Well, for undergrad, it's really pretty much the exact same thing. You, you get the solid foundations for physics. Uh, I want to do theory, but I still have to take two courses in, uh, in experimental physics. Once you go to grad school, certain grad schools will still make you do maybe a lab or two if you want to do theory, just to make sure that you're well-rounded. But it's grad school where it really starts to branch apart. More specifically, after, say, the second year, once you start to take your specialty courses, because the first year or two, you're really... Um, preparing for the qualifying exam and if you fail that then you don't get to be a grad student anymore uh, but that's pretty universal you so it's taking like your classical mechanics your quantum again um, stat mech things like that actually I don't know if stat mech is even on the qualifier but you get the idea Andrew do you know Stevie Ray Vaughan I learned to play this blues through Stevie Ray Vaughan which states slash countries have you been I've pr pretty much exclusively the East Coast I've been to Hawaii when my sister lived there because she was stationed there uh, and, I want to add, and I'm about to move to New Mexico, which is pretty cool. What's my favorite sport? I really like watching basketball and lacrosse. Serious though, what, uh, what's your day-to-day -day philosophy, and when did you reach it? Um, I don't like having too much free time. I like to keep myself busy, and, and I like to feel at the end of the day that I did something to make myself better at something that I like to do. Uh, so, for example, 
I like to try to get better at editing every single day. I like to try to learn something new with physics. I try to do something new to, to where it's not just a completely wasted day. Uh, have you ever been through an arrogant phase? What's your That's a good question. Yes, absolutely. I think um, when I was at VCU for a couple of years, I was, I was, I feel like I was a different person. Actually, I was very cocky, um, kind of a tool, actually. I was way too into, into weightlifting and really vain. I, I deleted my Instagram because that's all the pictures were, were me just being kind of a douchebag. So I definitely had my arrogant face, and I'm glad, I think I've, I've grown up a lot since then. What's my favorite meal? <sighs> Probably, I like turkey tacos. Those are really good. I have three questions. Do you solve the problems that you encounter reading the text that may or may not have specific pedagogical purpose? Also, do you solve all the end of the chapter uh, questions? What's my favorite YouTuber? What's my one rep max for bench squat and overhead press? Let's see. Um, for the first question, no, I don't answer all of them. If they have no use for me, um, then no, I don't answer them. Do I answer all of the questions at the end of the chapter, the ones that are relevant, or the ones that I think I don't know how to answer? Uh, what's my favorite YouTuber? I really enjoy Simon Clark's videos. He's the one who really got me into wanting to make physics videos in the first place. I really like PewDiePie. I think he's funny, and I, I think he gets a lot of shit when he shouldn't, uh, because people don't understand like the sarcasm and the whole need to. Uh, I think you know context matters with a lot of the jokes that he makes. I like Casey Neistat, I think he's just overwhelmingly positive and he just makes you want to try hard. Uh, what else? Then there's certain like physics related ones that I really enjoy for like learning physics, but those are pretty much the other ones. Also, I, I mean I'm a huge dork, I play RuneScape pretty much every single day and I have my favorite YouTube channels for that. But uh, anyways, oh yeah, you're one rep max for bench, so I've hit 315 once and I haven't been able to do it since. Any day of the week I can hit 295. Uh, squat, I probably wouldn't go over like 335, I have a pretty pretty weak squat. Overhead press, I've hit 205, uh, but that's for a clean press, so using a little bit of momentum. If it's just a clean overhead press, probably a good amount less. What are the most important maths associated with each? Classical mechanics, differential equations, e and M, vector and calc 3, uh, quantum mechanics, linear algebra and partial differential equations, and calc 3, sort of. Uh, yeah, and familiarity with like how to do complex analysis. Stat mech, uh, a lot of partial derivatives, holding and explicitly holding certain things constant. I wouldn't say, and um, a lot of statistics. Obviously, it's called statistical mechanics, but a lot of prob stat. So like, you'll see a lot of factorials, a lot of combinatorics. Special relativity, you can definitely do special relativity in tensor notation, but it's not 100% necessary. So special relativity, you can make it as easy as you want, you're just sort of limited to what you describe. GR, uh, GR definitely, I think once you start to truly understand linear algebra in a, in a more abstract way, then you're probably at a level to where you can start trying to tackle like transformations, linear transformations, things like that, and start going into like the realm of tensor analysis. And uh, so in GR case, tensor analysis and differential geometry. Quantum field theory, a lot of tensors, a lot of disgusting integrals. Um, let's see, what else? A lot of complex integrals, like contour integrals to get rid of certain singularities for like renormalization. Uh, this one I'm, I'm, I would be talking out of my ass quite a bit though. I don't really want to talk about QFT too much just because I haven't had a real course in it. Are lab courses a must, or can we skip them? Well, you have to take them. Uh, it's kind of up to you, I guess, if, if you can skip like attendance, but I don't recommend it. <clears throat> if you're paying for the class, you should go. Uh, so, it, so for my case, like I don't really enjoy experimental physics, but if I have to take the course, I'd rather get something out of it. I hear you uh, say in another video that you did music theory in school. I'm a music student and I'm also doing physics at school. That's an interesting combination. Um, I have a huge love for both. I was wondering if you could expand on what your musical background is and what instrument you play, etc. Well, I only took, I took AP music theory in, in high school and I've been playing, like I said, I've been playing guitar and piano for about 10 years now. 
Uh, I have relative perfect pitch, which means if I hear a note, I can compare it to my vocal range and figure out what the note is. It makes it much easier to um, figure out how to play songs like that, because from there, you can hear a note of the song, work your way down the scale, find Do, and then construct the chord progression out of that. So uh, I like to do like a lot of covers that way, but I'm, I'm not, I'm sure there's people who are much better than me. I know how to read music, but I mean, uh, moving on. Sophia, hi Andrew. What would you say to people that are currently in university in any related STEM field and are considering to switch their majors to physics, yet they are advised not to and scared about it because of the job market competition or the lengthy path towards a successful physics career? Well, um, as I've talked about before, I started out as a biology major, and uh, it was a combination of me not really being over overly enthusiastic about the field, and uh, actually it was mostly that. To, to that leading to me switching majors to physics. I really, it was, I was kind of naive, but again, I was um, I was 19 or so at the time, uh, because I wasn't thinking about job markets, I wasn't thinking about competition, I was just thinking about, I think I would enjoy this much more, and I was fortunate enough to be able to take that kind of risk. Um, I, I guess it depends on where you're at, because, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, 18, 19, 20 years old, this is sort of the only time of your life you'll be able to take risks like that. Um, you know, once you, once you grow up a little bit, I guess you'll be, you'll have, you'll be at less liberty to uh, take these risks if other people are depending on you. So if you can do it, if you think someone, if you think you'd like another field, I mean, my, my I say do it, but I mean, it, it just depends, it, it's so, it so depends on where you're at. You know what I mean? If, if, you know, I was lucky enough to where I was able to take out loans, I could defer the loans, and then, look, thankfully, see, this is one thing, it's like, you could switch to physics and end up not liking it, which is kind of scary, but I, I just think it's such a cool field to where I don't see how that would happen. If you, if you enjoy math, and uh, you enjoy just solving problems and not memorizing things necessarily. Um... But yeah, that's that really. I'm sorry, I can't give a better answer because it just it really depends on the person. Did you enjoy going to high school? I loved high school. I played uh, I played lacrosse in high school. I was very active. I um, you know, I, I enjoyed high school. It's just yeah, it was fun. What was your favorite class in undergrad? What class are you excited to take the most in grad school? I already answered that. I said uh, E and M and special relativity. What class are you excited to take the most in grad school? I'm excited to get into specialty courses. Uh, I, I enjoy taking, I'll, I'll enjoy taking another round of classical, E&M, StatMet, Quantum again in a more in-depth range, but I'm also I'm more excited for something completely new. So taking a formal course in quantum field theory, for example, I think that'll be pretty exciting. What is your favorite book, with and without a story, my boy? My favorite book. Um, with and without a story. I really, I do enjoy comics quite a bit. I know that that's not really a book, but I'm also a child, so I, I really enjoy Marvel comics. That, that's if I read stories, I would rather read comics. I'm not a big story reader. Uh, and then, as far as other books go, I really limit myself to I almost textbooks, things that explain physics or math. I, I, I enjoy textbooks. God, I'm, that's such a dorky thing. All right, anyways, moving on. So you won't be wise after that tooth being pulled. Do you get it? Because it's a wisdom tooth. <laughs> First, quality as always. Yes. What is your spirit particle? I've never heard anyone ask that before. Probably the strange quirk. Um, what, oh, and why? I just, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have a why, I'm sorry. What is your favorite class so again, already answered that one. Which topics did you find the hardest? I had a really hard time with classical thermodynamics. I thought that was a tough course. As well as uh, atomic physics. Those were two pretty tough classes. How do you approach having to learn physics or math related to stuff on your own when there's no structured and logical class helping you? Uh, don't, don't apologize. The English was perfect. Um, thank you for all the inter interesting videos. I'm glad you enjoy them. Um, When I, when I try to learn something by myself, I try to have like an actual textbook for it, and I like to have some kind of lecture series that I follow along with on YouTube. That's always really helpful for me. 
and uh, you know the textbooks have the practice problems. Normally I'll try to find a textbook that also might be an older one so the solutions might be online that I can work through. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll take notes, I take all my notes in LaTeX, I'll take notes and I'll write questions about what I don't understand, maybe search like physics stack exchange for a better explanation on that kind of stuff. And that in conjunction with the, with the YouTube videos, you can learn anything. Hi Andrew, do you at times wonder if you, if maybe you were good at school, but not necessarily suited for physics as a profession? I was wondering, since you seem pretty confident now, if so, how and when did that change? Also, love your content, keep it up. Uh, I think it was kind of the opposite, actually. I started out being very bad at school, and then I realized, um, you know, it was actually kind of when I, when I left VCU, once I started to grow up a little bit, that I realized it's like, what I want is, it's, it is not possible if I don't become a good student. So it's like, I don't get to have the life that I want if I uh, if I don't take this stuff seriously. So it was more so me starting out as a bad student and becoming a good one somehow made it work with physics. I don't, I don't know. More tensor vids and problems associated with the material to work as practice. Okay, so that's actually really good feedback. So uh, I might start having separate videos for the tensor series where um, we might work through some exercises. If you were interested in double majoring in math, knowing you wanted to do theory, uh, what path and class would you have taken? I'm on track for the topology track of pure math and pure physics. That's a, I mean, that's a really good one too. I would have enjoyed taking more like abstract algebra, maybe group theory. I, I don't think, see, at ODU a lot of the math courses associated with a math major would have made me take like three more statistics and probability courses, which just doesn't really help. Uh, I also didn't get very much out of my real analysis course, um, so I'd, I would have enjoyed taking another course in like formal proof writing, so that would have been pretty nice. And of course things like differential geometry would have been cool. Hey Andrew, I never did an internship in QCD, was wondering if the DGALP slash BFKL equations are what you're using for the internship, that's like evolution equations. Uh, no, not exactly. What I'm doing is strictly interested in like cross sections and um, uh, structure function decomposition, so that's that's why I've showed a lot of like the the hadronic tensor. Was wondering if the momentum transfers uh, are treated under a second quantization scheme. Absolutely, cool. Did you have a job during college? Would you recommend having a part-time job? Um, so when I was at VCU, I worked at like a pizza place delivering pizzas, and then at ODU, I was a physics and math tutor through the athletic department. And yeah, I do recommend having it, especially if you can get a job as a tutor. Uh, it keeps you from forgetting the stuff that you learned a while ago. What topic in theory interests you? I think that all of theory is pretty interesting, but I, I think that I really enjoy nuclear theory so far. Um, yeah. What do the Christoffel symbols do? I already answered that one. Um, wait, no I didn't. What do the Christoffel symbols do? What are they? And how can you calculate them using the metric tensor? Um, Christoffel symbols are really related to the covariant derivative. It's it's sort of well, the definition of the covariant derivative is in terms of the Christoffel symbol. How do you calculate them using the metric tensor? We'll get into that. If you could do undergrad all over again, would you do it differently or change? Um, I'm trying to think what I would change. I pro actually no, that's a good question because I would have started out probably getting my associate's degree rather than going to a four year. Um, assuming I, I assuming I didn't know that I wanted to do physics yet, because you could save yourself quite a bit of time and money going to like a, a, a two-year university and then transferring to a four-year, because I don't I don't think there's a need to go to a four-year right away if you're figuring it out. So that might be something that I would do, would have done a little bit differently. When there's a gravitational influence, it stretches the space to make the well. So is there more space created, or is one unit of space relatively larger than one outside of a strong influence? I've always wondered that, and this seems to be a good opportunity to find out. It stretches the space to make a well. Um, what's a good way to explain this? When you when you introduce the concept of like a curved space-time, it's not necessarily that it's stretching the space, it's, it's more so like the definition of the space itself is changing. Right, the definition of a straight line is changing. That's why you get things like uh, the geodesic equation. Um, so, more closely, I would say that the unit of space, yeah, the unit. 
how do you say that? How, how would I describe that? It's like if you say that the, the closest distance between two points is a straight line in flat space, yeah, but the di closest distance between two points on a sphere is a geodesic. It's still, it's changing the definition of a straight line. It's changing the definition of the space. What is your favorite physics book, like for lay reading? Um, I really enjoyed that tensor calculus that I read for tensor calculus for physics by uh, Neuenschwander. And then I'm going to have to cut this off here to go to my doctor's appointment. Had to cut that off, had to run to the doctor's for a bit. I don't have strep, I just have a sore throat, which is, I guess, good. Um, but the next question is, can ants learn everything about the universe? And if not, why are people hopeful that they somehow have what it takes to describe everything? I've never heard of that before in my life. Moving on. Numerical integration with Biot-Savar law in Python, please. That's not a bad idea. Do an actual physics, like E&M stuff in Python? Maybe, maybe in a future video. I like that people enjoy seeing like, the, the coding stuff, because I, I really enjoy making it. Um, if you've heard of it, what's your opinion on principles of quantum mechanics by Shankar? Uh, I'm pretty lousy at coding in general, and do most of my work by hand or in LaTeX. Is there a future for me, and if not, do you have any recommendations as to how to build up my coding ability? Yeah, Quantum Mechanics by Shankar, that's a pretty standard graduate textbook for, for quantum mechanics. I used it a lot for my atomic physics course. Uh, as far as coding goes, I mean, I didn't learn how to code by taking a course in it. I, took a co or I learned how to code uh, specifically in Python by doing my research internship, so kind of by submersion. So recommendations, just come up with a project, try to do something. What do you want to learn how to do in coding? Try to do it, learn someone, or meet someone who's better at you, better at you, better than it, better at it than you, and uh, see if they can look over it. Because there's, if you're a physics major, there's someone who's pretty good at coding, who's, you know, within, within ear shouting distance. So come up with a project, try to describe something, try to solve something in coding, have someone that you could talk to who can maybe look over it, and it'll come along. You just gotta do project after project and kind of build up the tool belt. I want to be an experimentalist. Why the hate, bro? Just curious why theory interests you more than experiment. Well, I'm not very good with my hands. When I took my experimental physics class, like it just seemed like there was such a gap in between turning the machine on and making the measurements, and there was a whole bunch of stuff that was going on in the machine that I didn't really understand, and it didn't seem like the other people did. Uh, not, not, not talking about the professors, but just the other people who enjoyed doing it. Um, it just seemed like it was doing so much for you and no one really knew what was going on behind the scenes and I think it's easier to kind of pop the hood, look under the hood uh, with theory than it is for experiment unless you're actually like building the machines uh, this, maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe it's just me being bad at you know building stuff but um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, let's see, in 10 years I will almost be 33 years old so hopefully finishing up postdocs and applying for a full-time faculty position somewhere. Yeah, yes. Which is the most common slash useful language for coding? Probably C++ or Python. C++ is faster, Python's more user-friendly. Um, if you're old, you're using Fortran. So probably those three, I would say. They all have their strengths and their weaknesses. In your experience, what are some physics-related careers that don't involve research? For example, those with a Bachelor's of Arts instead of a Bachelor's of Science. Well, you could do a Bachelor's of Science and still not want to do research. Um, uh, the, the thing that goes off in my head is, is probably just going into industry. And I don't know too much about how to get involved in that because I knew once I started doing physics that I wanted to do research. So maybe for a future video I could, I could look deeper into uh, in industrial career paths for physics majors and talk about that, but as of right now, I'm just not educated on the subject. Any good new physics books? Are you planning on reading any to prepare for grad school? I'm, I'm sure I'm just going to pick up the grad school textbooks for those for those courses. Uh, good physics, but I mean, there's the classics like the Feynman lectures. Um, I always liked anything written by Leonard Susskind. If I had the, those are the ones that are coming to mind. If you have to choose one physicist and one mathematician, living or dead, to take you to a lonely island, who would they be? Lonely, well, do you have like a whiteboard or paper or anything like that? Because if it's just to talk, who would have the best conversation with? Uh, and they would have to speak English because I don't speak any other language. So it's, so it's really physicists and mathematician who are also English speakers. That's a tough one. Um, 
Oh, Feynman. Feynman would be a good time. He'd probably bring his bongos, so that's that's one off the list. Mathematician. So let's let's stick with living then. So mathematician. Well, I guess I was gonna say Witten, Ed Witten, because I, I feel like the dude is just a genius. But I don't know if he technically counts as a mathematician or a uh, physicist. So then maybe maybe like Riemann. I don't know. That's a good question. Difference between physics and engineering, uh, about $35,000 a year difference. Just kidding. Physics, um, I mean, there, there's there's a reason STEM, in the, in the S part of STEM, engineering isn't in it. It's science, technology, engineering, and magicians. Um, engineering technically isn't like a science, I guess. I, I actually don't really agree with that. Let's, let's look at it this way. If you're doing physics professionally, I'm assuming that you're going to want to do research. That's the key difference, right? Uh, at the end of the day, the physicist wants to publish papers. For engineering, you want to build something, you want to design something, you want to whatever. Uh, that's not to say that engineers don't use physics. They obviously use physics and math in every single thing that they do, but they're not publishing papers out of it. And if they discover anything new, it's typically not new at a fundamental level, not new physics. F new physics is not being discovered by engineers. New physics is being discovered by physicists. And physicists <clears throat> and engineers really normally work together quite a bit, especially at the indus industrial level. <clears throat> so you'd have people who might have physics degrees go into industry alongside with engineers, and they might be doing the exact same job. So I'd say at the, at the professional level, that's when it diverges the most. Physicists do the research, they publish the papers, they want to explain some type of physical phenomena either through designing an experiment or creating a mathematical framework. An engineer might be the person that helps build the contraptions to do so. Or, you know, I'm, that's a little oversimplified, but that's how I look at it. Exciting time, except the wisdom teeth. For a question, how was your transition from high school to college life? I actually ended up asking this question to a lot of my teachers throughout these years because I'm terrified of going to college that it has its own set of fears. I guess I'm looking for some sort of guidance. You should comment on the US education system and your experience with it if you like. You could talk about something deep in philosophy like nihilism, existentialism, moral ambiguity, absurdity, free choice versus determinism, eternal loneliness, the meaning of life, etc. So yeah, have fun. Um, you always comment a lot on my videos, I noticed that. I mean, the transition from high school to college life, your first year of college is really just high school 2.0. Uh, you're taking your English classes, your maybe your history or your government classes, things like that. It's not too different. The first year is not that different, academically speaking, from high school. It might be a little bit more rigorous, but not really. I mean, it's like how hard can you make a 100 level English class? You can make it tedious and annoying, but not difficult in the sense to where it's like you fundamentally cannot understand what's going on. Uh, it can be, if you're living on your own, that's a whole new experience and that can be a lot to uh, to adapt to, and I know it was a lot to adapt to with me when I lived in because I lived in dorms my freshman year, and uh, I had an apartment my second year. Dorm life is amazing. You meet so many interesting people. I lived um, so when I was at VCU, I lived pretty much next to a whole bunch of art majors, which was um, pretty unique. So you got to you got to it's. In high school, I feel like you can be friends with a lot of people because you live really close to them. And in college, you're free to choose those people, which is which is cool. So it's different in all the right reasons, in all the good reasons, in the good ways. Uh, don't be afraid of it. College is awesome. It's really cool. Uh, just if this might be um, unnecessary if you guys watch videos on someone talking about how to be a good physics major. But the only thing is, is be careful how you spend your time in college, because it's really easy to waste your own time when that's not why you're there. You know what I'm saying? If you're there to get a degree in biology or chemistry or whatever it is, that's what you're there for. That's that's priority numero uno. Going out and making friends and having a good time, that's necessary, but that should never, never prioritize that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure how to tie that in with like existentialism I mean I always like that I always like the that side of philosophy nihilism versus existentialism people who think that there's 
know, no inherent value. There's different types of nihilism too. There's like active and passive. This is completely unrelated, but you asked me to talk about it, so I will. Active and passive nihilism, where you have people who were like, there was no intrinsic value to anything, but whatever. And then there's people that are like, there's no intrinsic value to anything. I need to make sure that that's how everyone else views it. And then you have existentialism that might view it's more closely to like the passive nihilism, which is like, uh, you know, life is what you make of it. You can make your own value for yourself. But um, so I, I always like that kind of stuff. It doesn't really do anything for me, but it's it's kind of fun to learn about how people think. What do you think was your biggest mistake or regret during physics undergrad? On the other hand, what was the best thing you did? Biggest mistake? Probably not putting more time into studying for the physics GRE. And the scheduling for it was just terrible. That part was kind of out of my hands, but what was the best thing I did? The best thing I did was probably become a physics and math tutor because that really helped solidify the knowledge that I had in classes that I had taken previously. And it forced me to learn how to explain things to other people. When did you start learning, learning computer science and coding? Did you take some classes? So my first exposure to coding was for, through my first internship where I did it in Python. And then the next semester I took a course in C++. And then after that I did uh, my research, my senior thesis in Python again. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I did in C++, I made myself do it in Python as well just to make sure that I knew how to do that kind of stuff. And then I took a course in computational physics, which I did a little bit in C++, but mostly in Python, actually like 90% Python. And I also have my research internship now that I'm doing in Python. So all that stuff just made me feel much more confident with coding. Um, why did I cut my beard? Beards are surprisingly um, a lot of work to take care of. If you don't, it's like, it's like having a second haircut that you have to like take care of. You gotta wash a beard, you gotta comb it, you gotta like get it trimmed. It's 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 kind of annoying actually. Um, so I was just kind of over it. I was I was kind of tired of having to worry about like stragglers sticking out. So you know I'll probably grow another one one day. But why do you like physics if it's hard to do? It's awesome. Why do you like physics? It's an awesome subject. You there's nothing more fundamental than physics. It's, it's the basis of science. Uh, you know, you t physics is the thing that, quantum mechanics specifically, is the thing that turns chemistry into a science. Right before it was a whole bunch of bookkeeping of elements, and then quantum mechanics comes around to explain electron orbitals and why things group the way that they do. So that turns that into a science. You iterate through chemistry to get to things. There's definitely a gap in between chemistry and biology, but that's the logical next step. <laughs> And then through that you get to fields like psychology, like it's, but at the very bottom level it's physics. That's what I like about it. That's better than my earlier answer. <laughs> what are some things you do as escapism activities to try to mitigate the constant toil of being a responsible human? Well this is actually similar to the video that I just posted today, which was like the working out thing. It's, it's a nice stress reliever. I love playing music, love playing RuneScape. Um, Let's see, what are some things to mitigate being a responsible human? Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing better than just, like, that's what's cool about the RuneScape thing. It's, it's a stupid game, but, you know, you get to, like, turn your mind off for a little bit and just fucking play play a game for a couple hours. It's nice. So that's probably my favorite, <laughs> my favorite thing to do, as lame as that sounds. Uh, I just want three hours of derivations of some sort. Do a pop of flammy. <laughs> Awesome. Like maybe teaching us some of that quantum you worked so hard on. See, I I've gotten uh, comments of people saying that I focused too much on doing the quantum videos, so I started trying to stop that a little bit. And also with quantum, it's, it's just, I don't know, I don't know how, maybe, maybe, maybe quantum, I don't know. Three hours of derivations. I wonder what kind of derivation videos I could do. I think the next derivation stuff should be either classical mechanics or ENM related. Maybe stat mech, maybe like thermo, but yeah, it's not a bad idea. Maybe not three hours though, because <laughs> that sounds really annoying to edit, just like how this video will be. Uh, where do you want to get in the end with all your gained knowledge about physics? Would you like to do research in a specific area? I've already answered a good amount of that. Uh, 
I would love to just be paid by the government one day to sit in a room with a whiteboard and come up with equations that I think describe how things work. Is your end goal to pursue research at a university, some private organization, or something else? That's too specific. That's too specific and too far away to really say that this is my goal. There's going to be so many different forks in the road and, and different opportunities that present themselves or don't present themselves to where it's like, I'm just going to do the best that I can in grad school, kind of publish papers, and see what opportunities come up. Hashtag Ask Andrew, do you love Kelly? I love Lamp. If you could work together with any scientist, dead or alive, who would it be? Thanks for making all the vids. Work with a scientist together. Um, well, I heard Dirac was kind of a pain to work with. I wouldn't want to work with him. Um, let's see. That's a really, really good question. If you could work together with a scientist. I think I'd pal around with Fine. I, I think Feynman and I would get along a lot. It's such a it's such a cop out answer, but it's so true. He seems so easy to get along with. <laughs> yeah, why not Feynman? How to have a calm and cool mind before, during, and after exams? Nothing cal nothing makes me more confident going into exam than being prepared for it. Not waiting the day before to study, like study two three weeks in advance. You know that's just you'd be surprised how just going over stuff really really early just helps with your confidence um, also emailing your professor what you're studying so if say for example um, what's a good example say you're in your ENM class and you're going through Griffiths and you're like yeah I'm stopping at the section hey professor I'm studying and I'm stopping at the section where we start talking about electric fields and matter I uh, just wanted to make sure that that's not something that's examinable for this test. They're gonna they're gonna respond to that. They're gonna say no, that is fair game, or no, it's not fair game. So probe your professor's mind a little bit. Uh, if you're confident that you know what they think is important, there you go. Also, something about your parents. Uh, my parents are super supportive of everything that I do. There you go. <laughs> Uh, is the potato a vegetable? It is a vegetable. What is meme? How is meme? When will meme? I am meme? Um, this is a fantastic question. Andrew in Deutschland. <laughs> the first the first Andrew Dotson fake account, at least to my knowledge. That's amazing. How is meme? I need to do more meme reviews. You guys need to post more memes for me to review. It's free content. <laughs> Test how good you are at pre-calc. I'll give you my username and password and you can make a video to see how fast you can do all the sections I haven't finished. That's funny. Yeah, what is that? Uh, my math lab? Sure. Any advice on how I should choose electives in physics? I know you don't know which area I want to specialize in, but I don't either. I was thinking maybe astrophysics or quantum computers. Maybe. Maybe. Frowny face. See, this is where, like, in my experience, I didn't have a choice in electives that I ha had to take. I took atomic physics because it was offered, and I didn't want to take accelerator physics the next semester. So it, I would have liked to have taken like nuclear or particle physics, but that just wasn't the case. So um, seeing as how you're in pre-calc now, you might not be aware of how available those electives are. They might not be offered every semester. Are obtuse triangles really as dumb as people think they are? Duh. I have no idea what that means. Choco or vanilla ice cream? Chocolate. Are you kidding me? That's what, what a what a great question to end on. I almost forgot. There was one more question that's not in YouTube or Twitter that I was asked. It was I brought it up like ten times already, but I in RuneScape someone added me who watches my videos and he wanted to know what I do in my spare time, so I just thought I'd even though I've pretty much explicitly said it throughout a bunch of different questions, it's just the whole, you know, I play music, I like to go to the gym, I like to play RuneScape, as he knows, I like to uh, hang out and talk about physics. I really do enjoy, in my free time, learning more physics stuff. I like to make these videos. Um, is there anything else that you guys don't already know? When I was in high school, I was sponsored for skateboarding. So I enjoy skateboarding, I haven't done it in a while. But that's a thing. That's new. Anyways, I guess that's about it for this Q&A. I don't think I'm gonna refresh this page just to make sure that no one else has asked any questions, and then we're gonna have to call it. 
So anything else? I should get a notification up here if I did. No notifications. So that means I think there were four questions on uh, the Twitter, 87 questions on the YouTube, and one question on the RuneScape. Oh, there's 89 comments. Someone commented something. I'm sorry that I missed your two comments. So that's like, that's almost 100 questions total. Hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Thanks for listening to me answer all your questions. And thanks for actually posting all of them. I was kind of worried that there wouldn't be very many, but that's almost 100 questions. That's awesome. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this kind of video. I don't intend on doing it too frequently, but maybe every now and then. Um, just let me know. I'll see you guys there. So cheers to 100 videos, and here's to another 100.